This is a Kenwood TS950S digital. This is a ham radio high frequency transceiver. It's getting a little older now. These came out in, I, I believe, in the 90s. Anyway, this has been working for a while, and now all of a sudden I found out that the receiver's dead on it, or at least it's not getting me any. Uh, Okay, turn the unit on. I had it hooked up to an antenna and I wasn't receiving anything, so I'm going to hook it up to a generator. I have it hooked up to a frequency generator here with an input of 7.01 megahertz. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm hearing something, but I'm running in uh, almost a volt, 900, over 900 millivolts. And I am hearing something. There's no indication on the S meter at all. Okay, I'm going to turn the generator off and the signal goes away. Turn it back on. So it's processing the signal, but uh, the receiver is pretty dead here. I should be, uh, at that amount of level, this thing should be off the scale. There's 90% modulation one kilohertz there's 400 cycles you can hear it in the background I'm back to a kilohertz I'm going to sideband Anyway, um, I guess we'll have to open up the unit and see if we can find out what's going on. This thing wasn't hooked to an antenna, so I don't believe there's been any uh, damage because of external static coming in on an antenna line. I hadn't used this rig in a while, and probably a few months, maybe. I only use it for short wave. But anyway, I turned it on the other day and this is what I found. So anyway, the next step will be to open it up and run some tests. So stand by for that. This is the RF unit here in the back. I'm feeding in a 14 megahertz signal. You can just barely hear it. I'll tune. You can hear it there. I'm running in 40 millivolts. And there's 60 millivolts, really no change. No indication on the S meter. It's way down in the noise. So I'm going to do now. This is where the RF board feeds into the IF unit. I'm going to pull the connector. This would be CN7 and I'm going to inject a signal directly into the IF board there's 200 millivolts I'm injecting directly into the IF so something's stopping our signal from coming through here so this receiver is working from downwind from the RF board so the problem is on the RF board here somewhere turn this down and the two signals from the RF board from the main and the sub receiver come through these two connectors here the 
So I guess we've isolated it to the RF board, so we'll have to move on from here. Stand by for that. Here's what I've done so far. Here's the main mixer on the main receiver, and this is a sub receiver, the first mixer. And the output of these two go to the IF board to the right here. The, the IF frequency of the main first mixer here is 73.05 megahertz. That comes out on this pin here, CN7 it says. And on the sub receiver, the, fir the uh, first IF out from this one is 40.055 megahertz, which comes out on this one. Now, when I injected 40.55 here, .055 here, I got a strong signal in the output. And when I came out here and I directly injected 73.05 megahertz, I got a strong output, which shows that the problem is in this direction here. So what I need to do, uh, let's see, I got some test points. Here's a couple test points here. I've got on the input of the mixers here, I got test point four and three. And then let me move closer to the front, I believe. The RF comes in, goes through these two relays, and this could be where the problem is too, because we've got two relays in here, and they're uh they can cause a problem. Another thing I need to look for is this transformer here, as I found on one of my previous videos, you get an open winding. Sometimes you get a static charge through here, and you can get an open winding, which will turn your receiver deaf pretty quick. Although this hasn't been hooked up to an antenna, so I don't know. Maybe I walked across the floor in the winter and touched it. I don't know. But anyway, here's a couple other test points. Test point one and test point two. So if I can run a signal in here, and still get output that will isolate it on this end over here so that's what I'm going to do next I'll inject a signal in here and this will be injected at the frequency that the receivers tuned to since it's before the mixer so stand by for that I'm feeding a signal directly into test point two this is just before both of the first mixers. I'm going to turn the RF generator on. Oh, and I'm coupling the RF generator through a 12 picofarad cap here to isolate it. So the RF generator is going to come on now. But I'm running in 32 millivolts, so so we've got a problem here. This is interesting. What if we got a bad solder joint? Could be. Well, I'd have to remove the RF board to check that. There's a lot of some, a lot of surface mount parts on the bottom of that thing. Ah, uh, but if I have to do it, I have to do it, I guess. These are uh, plated through holes in here, and I'm gonna see if I can get by with just soldering it on this side, so I don't have to pull that board, because I know this hole is plated, so I'm going to. much better anyway um, see if we lucked out I'll give it a try and if it works uh, we'll put it back together see what happens here's a schematic of the RF board where the incoming signal comes in at this point it's fed up here goes through two relay contacts here two relays these form an attenuator here 
there these are switched in and then the signal comes on here through a low-pass filter and then um, th this thing breaks the bands up into 15 bandpass filters here and they're switched in from the microprocessor through these lines RB0 through RB3 and they switch through pin diodes they switch in each section here you've got a section here 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 all the way down anyway from that point the signal goes to the right here you've got transformer L3 this is where it converts the impedance up to about 200 ohms and then the signal comes out through here um, you can see test point one and test point two these were a couple of the points that I that I tested Anyway, the signal comes over, this is part of the AGC circuit in here, and then it's applied to the RF amplifiers Q5 and 6 here. Well, anyway, I, the uh, receiver was pretty much deaf, and here's where I found the problem was. It, up at this point here, I had a bad solder joint at this junction here, and that was stopping any incoming RF from coming in. Here's your first mixers. You've got your first mixer here, your... Uh, uh, mixer here for the sub band and this is the main receiver here and the signal as it comes in through this transformer it's divided here so your sub receiver goes through it's mixed in this mixer here and that produces an IF of 40.055 megahertz which is connected out through a connector to the IF board and then the signal also comes down Q12 here into this mixer this is your main mixer and that produces your first IF for the main receiver of 73.05 megahertz and that is uh, connected in through a, a coaxial connector into the IF board and here's an, another view now of the sub mixer and the main mixer here and this is where the RF outputs come here this is where I tested initially I fed a signal in to these two points here and here and I was able to get signal through so that ruled out any circuitry to the right of this point and I knew the problem was this way here so then I worked my way back and I had uh, test point four and test point three here and as I worked my way back that's where I discovered the open circuit because of a bad solder joint up here so once I once I remedied that solder joint the receiver came back to life so that was the steps I took to uh, troubleshoot this unit here very complicated uh, radio you really need the service manual if you want to work on one of these the service manual is uh, not quite 300 pages it's a pretty good read. It's uh, very detailed. Well, the HF band is not open right now too much, but I can... AM radio's coming in, all right. Let's see if I can get that. I think that did it. Let's try... I can see upside down here. Let's try 20 meters. Oh, got a, it's got a wire hanging out the window. Oh, there's somebody in there. Okay. This meter's working. See if I can find anybody else in here. Yeah, 20 meters is dead today. Well, I think it's working. I'll hook it up to the signal generator and see what our sensitivity is here. Need to put the shields back on and then uh, 
put it back together and give it a final smoke test, I guess. has a narrow little CW on 20 meters. Here's an interesting tidbit. As I went through the manual, I always wondered why when I shut this thing off, the fan would run and then shut down. We'll come to uh, find out. That's how they discharge the main caps here. When you turn it off, you'll hear the fan run up. And what it's doing it's discharging the main caps through the fan. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Kind of a neat way to bleed off the charge. Anyway, an interesting tidbit. Little side bend on 20 meters. Well, I think it's working. So I'm going to put the hatch back on it and we'll put it back on the table, the radio table, and uh, go from there. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.